What's going on guys, my name's Theo Atrix and welcome to the nostalgic old school RuneScape historical timeline video. This video will take you back to the year of 2013 and work its way through the evolution and expansion of the game we've all played and loved since the early 2000s. Old School RuneScape's story begins back at the beginning of 2013. A YouTuber by the name Sorect with a 3 started a petition on the 27th of January on his YouTube channel. Basically just to see how many people really wanted an older version of RuneScape because at the time only RuneScape 3 existed. About a month later, Jagex mods begin discussing the idea and create a voting system on the main runescape.com website. Which in a matter of hours smashed through the minimum threshold of 50,000 votes. Not only that, the support continued until 449,000 votes, which meant that there would be a small team working on the game with an additional membership cost to simply play old school RuneScape. Also within the threshold, it showed that polls, which are now a big thing in old school RuneScape, would not be implemented. Even though only 449,000 votes were reached, Jagex took on the project as if over half a million people had voted for the game, with a dedicated development team, weekly maintenance, bot busting, banning gold farmers, and content polls. That being said, on the 22nd of February in 2013, Old School RuneScape was released to RuneScape member accounts as an exact replica of how RuneScape was back in August of 2007. Now originally, Jagex wanted to charge more money to use Old School RuneScape as well, but a post made on the 1st of March in 2013 explained their gratitude for all of the support for the game and decided that there would be no additional membership fees. Jagex pretty much gave us the lot. Now the first old school poll occurred on March 14 of 2013 and it asked membered players a few quality of life questions. Things like units, known as unidentified herbs, were voted no to becoming grimy herbs, but after a re-poll a couple of years later, the name of herbs did change. Now five months after the first old school poll, in August of 2013, Jagex polled whether God Wars should be included in Old School RuneScape. Now, God Wars was actually released on the 28th of August in 2007, which basically meant that the saved file that Jagex found, which brought the Old School RuneScape game back to life, was saved just before the release of God Wars. In these polls regarding God Wars, there were more questions about God Wars regarding a new magic weapon being added to Krill Tsutsaroth's drop table. This item passed the poll and is now known as the Staff of the Dead. Also in this poll was the Armadil Crossbow, and this crossbow was described as a crossbow with a special attack with an increase in accuracy. Two other major updates happened in 2013, and these were the Nightmare Zone minigame, which has proven to be one of the fastest melee combat training methods in the game. Also, Rooftop Agility was released towards the end of 2013, introducing the Graceful outfit, which has now become a vital skilling outfit used as a replacement for the resting function in RuneScape 3. Bonds were released into RuneScape. Now introducing a buyable in-game currency made the demand of the black market gold market to decrease by a long shot, which meant that Jagex had hugely impacted the illegal in-game activities such as gold farming and gold selling. The year of 2014 held a ton of incredible updates. In January, there was a large Slayer expansion with the Stronghold Slayer Cave being released and Kraken was released with the Trident of the Seas. In March, the Wilderness was revamped completely and Wilderness bosses and Demi bosses were introduced into the game as as well as the Odium and Malediction Ward, Wilderness God Wars, and Lava Dragons. 
Now, April brought us the Motherlode Mine, which still is one of the most AFK and more relaxing mining training methods in the game. And through June and July of 2014, clue scrolls were revamped slightly, elite clues were brought into the game, third age weapons were brought into the game, which now stand to be the, some of the most valuable items in the game. And they also expanded the god books to Armadil, Bandos, and Anxious. One of the greatest and most appreciated updates by Jagex is Iron Man mode, which was released on the 13th of October in 2014. Now, Iron Man mode is a gameplay mode that prevents players from trading, and it basically makes players do their own thing no matter what. An ultimate Iron Man is also available and this prevents you from using a bank and also hardcore Iron Man were released further down the track in 2016. In 2015, the old school RuneScape team brought a range of superb updates starting the year off with Zora. And also, despite not getting 750,000 votes in the poll, Jagex still introduced free-to-play into Old School RuneScape in February. Now, all the way until the 26th of February in 2015, the only way to trade was through trading, and there was no Grand Exchange. By March of 2015, the Grand Exchange had fully been integrated into the old school RuneScape servers after it had only just passed the polling threshold of 75%. Now, as 2015 draws to an end, Jagex has released more and more incredible updates, such as the Achievement Diary expansion, and for those that don't know, Old School RuneScape started off with only a Karumja Achievement Diary, and now it has pretty much everywhere. Now, a few months after this expansion, they released Resizable Mode, and this was one of the first steps towards a more high-definition and user-friendly RuneScape. The final large update of 2015 occurred on the 29th of October, and that was Dead Man Mode, which is an open world PvP area where one player, if they kill another player, receives a key to a chest, letting them loot the items from their victim's account, even the items in their bank. This game mode has proven to be one of the most community bringing game modes and on things like Twitch and YouTube, Dead Man Mode is some very interesting content to watch. Now moving right into 2016, there were quite a few large updates starting off with the release of Zaya. On top of Zaya came the favor system in the whole Zaya area and this kind of brought a brand new aspect to old school RuneScape which was never there before. About six months later, the catacombs of Kurend were released in the middle of Zaya. This made Slayer a whole different task. In the middle of 2016, Jagex expanded construction and released the Superior Garden and the Achievement Gallery. About a month later, after this expansion, the Winter Todd was released, by far being the most enjoyable fire making training method in the game, and it somewhat gave a reason to get 99 fire making in the first place. The 13th of October in that year, the ZMI, now known as the Arania Altar, was released and this was pretty much an identical replica of the ZMI in RS2 or RS3 still. Moving right into 2017, at the start of the year, one of the greatest updates ever been released by Jagex was brought to the table, the Chambers of Zeric, known as Raids. Rigor and Augury, two brand new prayers, the Dragon Claws, Cestral Robes, and the Twisted Bow were released in this update, and the community's reaction to this update was outstanding. However, one month after this great successful update, Jagex released Shift Dropping, and this created quite a bit of tension in the skilling community. Personally, I think it is one of the best things ever, but this really shook the community a little bit. About four months later, Jagex announced the development of a mobile version of RuneScape and expects to have a beta released by late 2017, and that is pretty much now. The fully developed old school RuneScape mobile will be properly released at the end of 2017 and will most definitely be a very, very high hitting application on the App Store. 
To round off this historical timeline, we're going to go into the future, into 2018, with some future updates. Recently, Jagex released a developer blog about Dragon Slayer 2, which is going to be a grand master quest, which involves a very, very long history of the dragons in old school RuneScape. Now, Group Iron Man, I'm sure, may have been on your mind in the last couple of months. However, there has actually been no confirmed dates for Group Iron Man, but my expectation is that it will definitely be worked on and released after Old School RuneScape Mobile. Because, let's be real, moving a desktop web browser game onto a mobile is a very big project for a company. Now, Mod Ash also speaks about reworking the entire farming skill to make growing time more consistent and not off a global game tick. Mod Ash also speaks about making use of some patches which are never really used, like hops or allotments. And by doing this, he's going to add more different types of crops, like the dragon fruit tree. Coming at the start of 2018 is the Wilderness Rejuvenation version 2. Now the bosses in the wilderness will now drop new god capes and are supposedly far harder to obtain than the regular god capes that are out there. On top of this, another update that I'm very excited for is the Revenant Caves and these will be brought back while well, Jagex has been talking about them and will build on the principles of the original Revenant Cave in RuneScape 2. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this timeline kind of video about old school RuneScape updates and what the whole game revolves around. If you did enjoy today's video, be sure to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more awesome videos like this one. But as always guys, thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.